Hello friends, this is Dr. Asim Khan, Associate Professor, Department of Psychology, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. I am discussing about contingency coefficient. This is one of the statistical technique from non-parametric statistical methods. Contingency coefficient provides a measure of correlation when each of the two variables under study has been classified into two or more categories. The contingency coefficient is a coefficient of association that tells whether two variables or data sets are not related or related to each other. The contingency coefficient helps us to decide if variable y is contingent or dependent on variable x. To conceptualize the contingency coefficient, it is a rough measure and doesn't quantify the dependence exactly. As a guide, if C is near 0 or equal to 0, you can conclude that your variables are independent of each other. There is no association between them. If contingency coefficient is away from 0, there is some relationship. Contingency coefficient can only take on positive values. The larger the table your chi-squared coefficient is calculated from, the closer to 1 a perfect association will approach. That's why some statisticians suggest using the contingency coefficient only if you are working with a 5 by 5 table or larger. Now discussing the real time example, for example, a researcher interested to examine the relationship between marriage adjustment and education of husband. Calculate the coefficient of contingency for the data given below. If you look into the education of the husband, it has four categories, marriage, adjustment, scores of the husband is also divided into four categories. And the value given in the cell is frequency. So these all are frequencies. Now revisiting the earlier table, as we have been doing in the chi-square test. Now the task is to calculate the expected value for each cell. The formula used to calculate the expected values are the formula is row total, column total, divide by grand total. So this is the value. Similarly, values in parentheses are expected values for each cell and against observed value. Now calculate S. S is equal to summation observed square divided by expected. So for each cell, the value of S is to be calculated and both values for each cell are given 
observed value and expected value. So after calculating the S for each cells, the summation sum all values. The value of S for cell 11 can be calculated in such a way that as I already discussed with you. Similarly, calculate S for all cells and sum. In our case, the S is equal to 545.05. Now the formula to calculate the contingency coefficient is under root S minus N divided by S whereas S is equal to 545.05 and N513 number of participants or subject in our study. Now putting the values into the formula, so 0.24 is the correlation coefficient between two variables, marriage adjustment and education of husband. It can be interpreted the correlation between two variables is positive. Uses of the contingency coefficients it help you to examine, to estimate the extent of the relationship between two variables or to show the strength of a relationship. The observed cell frequencies and the expected cell frequencies are used to test if the raw and the column variables are independent. The contingency coefficient is a coefficient of association that tells whether two variables or data sets are not related or related to each other. A contingency coefficient is particularly informative if you are working with a large sample and you don't need to find out if an association is complete or not just whether or not the association exists. Other alternative measures of association include the phi coefficient that we have already learned which has the same weak point as our contingency coefficient never reaching one perfect correlation. Kramer's V is often preferred because with perfect association it becomes exactly 1 no matter how large the table. Thank you.